Huge thanks to my exclusive Computex sponsor, ASRock. I use an ASRock Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard in my personal rig and I absolutely love it. So make the right choice for your next build and get yourself an ASRock motherboard. Links are in the description down below. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about some Ryzen 3000 overclocking news. But first, if you haven't entered my graphics card giveaway, I'm giving away an ASRock RX 590, so definitely check out that video, you can find out how to enter. Uh, you're definitely gonna want it, especially I assume most of you guys are gaming at 1080p, so that's gonna be a really, really solid GPU for 1080p gaming, and hey, who doesn't want a free graphics card so definitely go and check out that video well let's talk about today's news so this uh, i suppose you might call it leak or confession <laughs> it comes from chip hell and they're talking about how the ryzen 3000 series cpus overclock and it's quite interesting so this was reported by a bunch of different news websites i'm just going to use a wccf tech article and it reads by saying the overclocking details come straight from Chip Hell, where forum member one month, the same guy responsible for showing us the first look at the Ryzen 3000 APUs, has given us the overclocking details for Ryzen 3000 CPUs. The new details are rounded up over at Reddit, so let's take a look at them before heading into the details. And we see that 4.8 gigahertz is achievable on all cores, although I have seen a little bit of pushback on that some people saying that's a bit too high and it's more reasonable to assume that you would be able to get like 4.5 gigahertz on all cores which from the clock speeds we've been given that does seem more reasonable but i mean 4.8 still could be reasonable as well 4.4 gigahertz performs similar to a 5 gigahertz 9900k in cinebench this is uh, very believable because of what amd showed us at the keynote so i definitely believe that this is due to the ipc gains and other things uh, so yeah, I definitely believe that part. 5 gigahertz is doable, but a challenge. This seems to be referring to, like, th this is not on all cores, by the way. This is just getting, like, a single core up to 5 gigahertz. Uh, sure, I believe it, but you probably have to use, like, maybe a ton of voltage, and you probably have to win the silicon lottery as well, but it does seem like it is possible, but it will only be on a single core. So it's that's not really that practical. I guess it is in certain you know tests, but uh, for the most part, most people would rather that kind of all higher all core turbo. Overclock for overclocking Ryzen three thousand is still faster. I okay. Five gigahertz boost isn't un infeed, infeasible. Okay, so that's pretty much like what they said before. Five gigahertz all core. Uh, is pretty much no go so that's what you would assume if 4.8 is only achievable then 5 gigahertz probably isn't that good and 1.35 volts for all core 4.5 gigahertz now i really do believe that too uh that certainly makes sense given that a lot of these cpus are like their their top boost speed is like 4.4 4.5 4.6 um so getting them up to that it probably will depend once again on the silicon lottery but that is believable we still don't have, this is what I was speaking to Wendell about yesterday actually at Computex. There's not that much information out right now about how the new XFR works and how these CPUs are gonna turbo. So we have obviously with any leak, you have to take it with a grain of salt, even if they seem like they're quite legitimate, which these ones do. Uh, it, we, we really need to actually test these CPUs out first and see how the XFR and that works with them before we can really make uh, any sort of assumptions about how the overclocking works. So let's go on to read the article and it says, so starting with the details, it looks like five gigahertz will be achievable on the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. It is also mentioned that while five gigahertz is possible, it's a real challenge to reach this higher frequency number and would require a lot of voltage. We have already seen how a 16 core Ryzen 3000 CPU, which was leaked a few days ago, required up to 1.572 volts just to hit 4.25 gigahertz. And the one that is being tested over here is also clearly marked as an engineering sample, but we don't know if it's the newer A1 or the older A0 revision. Uh, so yeah, yeah, anything over 1.5 volts, if maybe you're a bit newer to, to tech and you don't really understand what that means, 
uh, core voltage wise, uh, going over 1.5 volts is it's really it's starting to get up there. And you would probably need some pretty serious. These will be soldered, as you would expect. But even so, uh, this would require pretty decent cooling to uh, keep that thing under wraps. So it may be the case that when AMD launches, we know that the Wraith Prism will be the stock cooler for all the new ones they'll be releasing, both the Ryzen 7, so the 3700X and the 3800X, uh, but also the 3900X. That's still a pretty beefy cooler, stock cooler. You know, that would be fine. I, I have a feeling that the 16 core may just not come with a cooler and you'll have to supply your own. If, if it's going to require voltages like this, you're going to need some pretty serious cooling. So they're going to bundle it with maybe a small liquid cooler like they did back in the day with things like the 9590 or uh, they will maybe put a huge air cooler with it. Um, they were like the Wraith Ripper or something like that. They'll do something like that maybe. Uh, but I could assume that because they have released Ryzen CPUs in the past without stock coolers um, that they might just release the 16 core enthusiasts are going to be the main people buying it anyway and the retailers often will then bundle them with an aftermarket cooler that they think is uh, acceptable for it so that could be what happens there and the article goes on to read it is also said that the chip is faster than its competitor the i9 9900k when overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz in cinebench benchmark and that the 5 gigahertz boost frequency single core are quite feasible and silicon lottery variants will be able to hit that pretty much with ease that's interesting at the same time, 4.5 gigahertz OC can be achieved on, on the part with just 1.35 volts, which is something that the community should be very excited about. And that's the all core frequency that the leaker is talking about. So, yeah, as I said, 5 gigahertz on a single core, like if you're doing like a single thread Cinebench test or something like that, it might, you know, that, that will pump the number up. Uh, certain games as well that, that could be beneficial for. But I would say for the most part, especially for people who are doing productivity, I mean, that doesn't even matter. Like, you, it's the all-core turbo that really matters for anything productivity and also in quite a few games and different things. So I think that's the much more important about. So 4.5 on all cores, uh, say, assume that's like the 3900X as well. That would be very, very good. You know, 12 cores at 4.5 at 1.35 volts. That, that's awesome. So yeah, this is just a sort of a bit of news that's come out. Uh, obviously, you take it with a grain of salt. We have to get them, you know, the reviewers like me have to get them themselves. Um, and then we can test themselves and do do the overclocking and see what happens with them. We also got just briefly a little bit of Navi news. It's looking like the pricing, at least right now, the sort of leaked pricing is going to be matching the for that top end RX 5700 um, is going to be matching the... RTX 2070 in terms of price, MSRP. It has been shown by AMD to be 10% faster. So if it's the same price and 10% faster, then that may entice some people. Although the, the die size is obviously much, much smaller. That's because the RTX 2070 has all the, you know, uh, tensor cores and stuff like that for all the RTX stuff, the ray tracing stuff. So I, I feel I'm much more excited about the Ryzen 3000, um, given the specs that we have, than the upcoming Navi chips. Although that is still exciting from everything we're seeing right now. It's looking like it's just going to be not so much of a huge leap forward and kind of just more or less matching what uh, NVIDIA's put out, basically, with the RTX 2070, which launched a while back now. So if it's just going to match it, uh, in terms of price and just be a bit faster, then that will still get generate some sales. But I don't think, at least me personally, uh, it's tremendously exciting. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically all the recent news we have here. Um, and I've just spoken to quite a few people around Computex and this is sort of backing it all up. So I talked about more of that stuff in my X570 video. So if you didn't watch that, the one I did the roundup at ASRock, uh, check that out because I mentioned uh, talking to them about how what X570 has been like, if they've been having trouble with it, you know, bugs and all that. I talked about that in that video, so definitely go check that out. But that's going to end this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below, like usual. Uh, maybe you've heard things I haven't. What do you think about the Ryzen 3000 in terms of overclocking? Have you heard something? Maybe, you know, you read an article or you saw a post by someone on somewhere uh, that's, that's sort of confirming this or 
throws out different numbers, I'd like to know in the comment section down below. Let me know what you've heard about Ryzen 3000 or Zen 2 in regards to overclocking. Now, thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.